Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Elders for the Global Evangelistic Ministries in Everston. So glad to be here with you on another Sunday afternoon. Listen, I'm excited about what God is doing and how he's going to uh, work things out in our lives on this day. And I'm, I'm excited about the message myself. So let's just jump into a word of prayer and then find ourselves getting right into the message. Heavenly Father, we thank you now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the ability, the power, the might, and the authority to examine ourselves. That we don't need nobody to tell us what's good, what's bad, what's right, and what's wrong. Because we can examine ourselves and compare ourselves and compare what we see to the word of God. And see if it lines up. Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would help us to be a people that we live by your standards, oh God. Not by the standards of one another, not by our own standards, not by those things that we think that we should be doing and how we should be doing. But God, as your word says, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. I'm going to, even today, I want to talk with you all. Uh, first impressions are so lasting. You know, first impressions... When, whenever you ever find yourself coming into a situation and this is your first encounter with that situation, you say, hey, is this really what it is? If it's not a good experience, you want to, is this what I really want? Or can I deal with this? Or is this something that I'm willing to tolerate? Or other times, if it's a great experience, you say, woo, I got to do it again. Well, uh, there, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, a narrative in the Bible that, uh, or, uh, that Jesus tells when he, uh, which there's a narrative in the Bible that is actually, that takes place in the book of Matthew, right? Where a mom, she shows up to Jesus. Now, I, I'm not quite sure if Jesus had ever met this mama before. If, if I knew, he, I know he knew the sons because he knew them well. They were his disciples. But a mother, she shows up one day. Uh, she must have been around quite a bit because she was close enough to get to Jesus. Right? Everybody didn't make it to Jesus, and, and she had a little private time to talk with Jesus on this day. But this impression, I believe that it left on Jesus and the other disciples, makes a world of difference. And I, I, want to see, I want us to look at this and see how it relates to our lives as well. There was a mother, she comes and she asks Jesus for special seats for her sons. She was asking that the one son sit on the left hand of Jesus and the other son sit on the right hand of Jesus. And at that moment, Jesus tells her, you really don't know what you're asking for. Then Jesus asked the question, are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? And the mom said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the boys, they stood by and they said, yeah, we can do it. We can do it. We can do exactly that. We can drink that cup that you have to drink. They sincerely said yes, and after Jesus said to them, to sit in my right hand and to sit in my left hand is not mine to grant. But it is for those whom the Father has prepared. Unmistakably, this upset the other ten disciples. Now, this is, uh, could you imagine that somebody trying to bump to the front of the line? Like, literally, we all been here. We all been here around the same time. And I don't know when y'all came in. You might not have been the first one called. If we go by seniority, right, Jesus called possibly somebody else first. And literally now that you're going to send your mama in to actually ask for this special favor. It upset the other disciples. So the ten disciples, when they heard this, they were upset. Then in verse 25 and 26, Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. But he says, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be a servant. One of the things that we recognize is that oftentimes people want to be in leadership and they want to be the boss and they want to be in charge and they want to be the authority. But oftentimes real leadership is actually you being the servant to all. When you actually begin to actually serve, when you begin to serve your people, I, I, one, one step of, one point of advice that I give to those that are starting businesses is I, I tell them, uh, you know, they, they, they're going after the customers, right? That's right. They're going after a profit. That's right. But don't forget your staff. That's right. 
I tell them that the, if you're gonna actually do well and be successful in your business, you must treat your staff as your customer. Why? We say the customer's always right, right? And so if you treat your staff like your customer, then literally when the staff actually go out to deal with the customer, the customers are gonna be pleased every time, yeah. right? So leadership is servanthood. And so what we begin to see is, we see a teacher, and we understand that a teacher, and those that are, want to be in charge and be an authority, they're a leader. And then what Jesus said in verse 27, he says, whoever wants to be first must be your slave. No, 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 nobody don't want the slave title. <laughs> nobody don't want to be the slave. <laughs> no, nobody want to be the slave title. Meaning that at times, at times you're going to have to, listen, a, a, a slave doesn't own anything. They don't even own their opinion. I, do, you, do, you, do you not recognize that? Let's not talk about slaves. Let's, let's get away from slaves. Let's talk about servants. Let, let's not talk about servants in the Bible time. Let's talk about servants like butlers and waitresses and, and maids and, and servants of that footmen and things of that nature, they do not even own their own opinion. Because everything is towards their Lord, right? Now the Lord would be the head of the house, right? And so everything is about what the Lord desires and what the Lord wants. And if they're asked their opinion, they say, well, if that's what the Lord wants, then I'm with it. And if that's not what the Lord wants, then I ain't with it, right? I want what the Lord wants, right? They do not even own their own opinion. And he's saying that if you're going to be, he says, he says, the one that's going to be over everything must first be your slave. Amen. These are words that the chief shepherd said in, 20, in, in verse 28, that Jesus as the son of man did not come to be served. He did not come to be served. He did not come to be patted on the back. He did not come to be encouraged. He did not come to be built up, but he came to serve. And that he gave his life as a ransom for men. What happens is Jesus is explaining his mission and how he would accomplish it. Oftentimes, if we're going to know our mission and what we're supposed to be doing in this life, me and my son, when we first started the church, we, we set out and we said, if we're going to be great in this, we're going to serve everybody. I mean, listen, we really get, did a good job. After a while, we started receiving invitations no longer to come to events. They were offering us to come, break down tables, sweep the floor. <laughs> I said, like, wait a minute now. We're doing a good job, right? We serving everybody. We was, we was moving furniture. We was paying for trucks. We was, I tell you, we was serving everybody, right? We was doing a good job. But... Those that desire to be in leadership must first be servants. Now what Jesus, he had set out to do was he had set out not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for men. Jesus, what he does is he explains his mission and how he would accomplish it. And that those who would lead must be willing to serve. Now, the warning here is, that we're going to see a little bit later is, is that those that desire to become teachers and those that desire to do well and those that desire to be an authority, uh, we, we see that in James 3, 1 is uh, they shouldn't do it without going after the servant piece. They shouldn't, they shouldn't try to take it on without considering where they are in their walk with Christ. Amen. That, that it, is, it is so important for them to actually come into a place of servanthood that they might find themselves operating in a place where they might receive what they need. Now, now one of the things I want to talk to you about is that this is part of the mind of Christ. When we begin to think about what is the mind of Christ, when we begin to think about what is the mindset of Christ, the mind of Christ actually deals with godly wisdom, God's wisdom, the way that God thinks, the way that we should be thinking in order to go forth. Go with me now to James chapter 1, and we're going, James chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 18. Uh, 
Hallelujah. And it says, it starts at 18, and it says, it reads like this. It says, he chose to, now it go, let's, let's go back. It says, uh, it's, verse 17 talks about every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Verse 18, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, right? That we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Today what we're going to talk about is control yourself. See, what, what was happening in that story, in that parable was, is that literally the mama had went and set up because the brothers, they wanted to be masters, right, of us. And sometimes we can set ourselves in a position that we want to become leaders. We want to become masters of others. But what happens is, is that we're going to have to, if we're going to do what it is that God has called us to do, we're going to have to learn to control ourselves. Amen. And he, and he goes through and he, he reads, and I'm going to continue to read. He says, dear my brother, says, take note of this. Everyone be quick to hear, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humble, accept the, humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so, be deceive, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Verse 23. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Do what it, But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they, are, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Amen. We talking about, what are we talking about today? We talking about control yourself. You got to control yourself. If you're going to make it, if you're going to lead others, first you got to lead you. Amen. <clears throat> He's given us the gift of self-examination. Amen. He's given us the gift of actually being able to look at ourselves and see ourselves and compare ourselves to the word of God and see if our lives match up with the word of God. Not the person next to you. Amen. Because oftentimes if I compare myself to you, then I can say, well, I see everything wrong with you and I don't have a problem in those areas. But when I begin to look at the word of God, there's always something to strive after. There's always something to go after. There's always something that causes me to be a little bit better. And so James 1.18, what he tells us, he tells us to choose. He, that he tells us that he chose to give us birth through the word of truth. That God chose to give us birth through his word of truth. That we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Amen. Now we recognize that the world was already created. We recognize that the world was already formed. We recognize that all these things were in position but for us to be the first fruits of what God created it came through he, to, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that our lifestyles our, 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 the new birth right the born again experience right it, it comes through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all that was created. And what do we recognize? We recognize God's will. What was God's will? It was by God's will he brings us forth. It wasn't by the will of man. It wasn't by the, your, your mom or your daddy. It, it was by the will of God that he desired to bring us forth. And how did he choose to bring us forth? By the word of truth. What is the word of truth? The gospel. By the gospel, he chose to bring us forth that we, that we might receive what we needed. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. Amen. The gospel is the good news that, that, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right? That, and then what does he tell us? He says, he says he wants us to be the first fruits. Now, what is the first fruit? Now, listen. Let me tell you something. Uh, there's, a, there's a big thing about the tithing. 
right now, right? About what we should be doing and what we should not be doing. And I'm going to say this. One of the definitions of tithing is first. Is first. One of the definitions of tithing. Tithe is first. Do you know the first of everything belongs to God? The first of everything belongs to God. Amen? And, and so, I, so whether you pay 10% or you pay 3% or whatever, that's, that's not what we're talking about right now. The first of everything belongs to God, right? And so what he says is, he says, by God's will, he brought us forth, how? Through the word of truth, which is the gospel, right? That we should be the kind of first fruits, the first, which belongs to God, of his creatures. This way God desires, it says this way, this way God desires in creating, this is how God desired in creating mankind, right? Yes. Verse 19 goes on and says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone, now, now, now that we're in his first fruits, we should look like him. We should sound like him. We should act like him. And if we don't act like him, sound like him, and look like him, then we should actually look to the word to see what we should be looking like. Because we need a Christ-like mindset. We need the mindset of Christ. We need the wisdom of God. And the way that we get that is from the word of God. It says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be doing what? Quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to become angry. Why? Because the anger, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Amen. The Bible tells us that anger but sin not, right? So anger is not bad in itself, right? To become angry only notifies, it's, it's, it's like when you stub your toe, the pain notifies your body that something actually has taken place. It lets you know that something is going on that should not have gone on. It, may, it notifies you that there's a part of me that I need to look at and address, it, right? Because if you stub your toe and stub your toe and stub your toe and you do not feel it, eventually you can really hurt yourself. So anger in itself is not bad. But, it, but when the anger is allowed, the Bible says anger but sin not. But when we allow that anger to sit and to fester and to grow, do you know so You know when you get angry, you know when the anger starts. You know when it's set now. You know when it's beginning. And, and, and what happens is he's telling us that, that because when we really get angry, it does not do what? Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Now, what is righteousness? Righteousness, one of the definitions of, right uh, 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 of righteousness is right actions or God's standard. So human anger does not produce the right actions or the God standard that God desires. Therefore, he says, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent. It, do you know it's easy to do bad? I probably will get in trouble, but sin is fun. It, sin can be fun at times. Forgive me, y'all. I'm on lie. <laughs> but listen, you got to get rid of all of that. That so easily gets in the way of you actually doing God's desired will. You, that gets in the way of you not being able to go and be as God has called you to be. It says, it says therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humble. Humbly accept the word planted in you, the word of truth that is planted in you. Humbly accept it, right? Humbly accept it. Sometimes we want to resist it, right? The goal of it is to love what God loves and hate what he hates. And sometimes we don't love what God loves. You say, God, I don't even like that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that, right? We must love what he loves and hate what he hates. And so sometimes we, we have to, what he's telling, the word of God is telling us is to put away all moral filth, all evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word. Planted in you, which can save you. So the word that we receive can save us but that other stuff can destroy us. And so what God is telling us is, is that if we're going to be a people of God, we have to control ourselves. We got to control ourselves. We're going to control ourselves by how we, we're going to control how fast we listen. Sometimes, do you know sometimes when people are talking to you and you're upset, you cannot hear a word that they're saying. You see their mouth moving. You see what's going on. 
Sometimes there's a little ringing in your ear and you just ain't hearing nothing. You just, because you, you waiting on, sometimes you thinking about your next thoughts, what I'm about to say when this is all said and done, because I got my point already lined up. And literally what happens is we can control how we listen. We can actually control how slow we speak. Because oftentimes, sometimes what happens is, is that we'll find ourselves before listening wanting to speak. Uh, do you know that, that what happens is that, that this is really God saying that you need the Holy Ghost, you need the Spirit of God to help you. You need the fruit of the Spirit to help you to do this right here, to be quick to hear, to be slow to speak. Lord, I need your fruit. Come on, that's a prayer point right there. Lord, I need your fruit. I need it. I need it, Lord. I need it. Why? Because, because in the midst of your listening, why are you listening? Being swift to hear, why are you listening? Do you know listening can still make you mad? <laughs> You can hear exactly what they say, and you say, ah, that, that really just don't make it no better, right? But, but in the midst of it, what you're doing is, is you're saying, God, I need to see this from another perspective. God, I, I need you, Lord, to, to, to help me think in the lines of mercy. God, I need you to help me to try to see this from a place of, of uh, how this can be handled well how this can be successfully accomplished, that we might remain in communication, how we might be able to continue to, to move forward. Uh, God, I need you to help me to be quick to hear. And when I'm hearing that I hear actively, that I hear impactfully, right? You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Active listening. And, and, and impactful listening, that, that, that now I really hear what you're saying. Yeah. I'm really listening. Yeah. You, have my, you have not just my, my ears, but my, in my heart I'm listening as well. Yeah. And, 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 and God, you're going to help me that even if they say some stuff that I don't want to hear. I've heard some stuff that I don't want to hear. And somehow the, the, the Lord, he, he blinds me. <laughs> he blinds my heart. Because I know, I said, wait a minute, that was wrong. But somehow or another, I, I heard it, but I didn't hear it, right? You don't, you don't think about it until later, right? I, I, I called it later. I said, wait a minute, that was an insult. You understand? Wait a minute, that was somebody trying to hit me hard. Uh, somehow he blinded my heart <laughs> as I was listening to not hear what I was hearing. That in that moment, I didn't become angry. Because... That might have been the intention of the other person. Yeah. I, I, I remember one day I was helping somebody. I was helping an individual and I, I literally, I had, I had gotten up out the bed early in the morning at, at a time where I could have still been resting a little bit. I, I had got in the car, you know, and, and put gas. You know gas is a little high right now. And, 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 and and, 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 I, and I offered them breakfast. I was going to take them to breakfast. Now, now you understand that there's a lot of giving on my part right now. And this individual took this opportunity to let me have it. <laughs> to, to, to actually tell me about me. And, and to tell me what was wrong with me. And, and, and I'm driving and I'm looking. <laughs> Is this for real? Like, Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. You, you got to remember, you, sometimes it's got to be bigger than you. Sometimes it's got to be bigger than your emotions. Sometimes it, you, you got to remember that the Lord, the reason I'm here right now is because the Lord said be here right now. And if he hadn't told me to be here right now, I wouldn't be here right now. And I cannot mess it up. I, I remember I was working with another individual, and and and, and they they was getting. Have somebody ever got under your skin? I mean, like under your skin. I, I, you know what I'm talking about, right? They, they, they on your nerves, right? Now I know one preacher. He said he ain't got no nerves. I'm working on that. I'm trying to get my nerves gone, right? But he said he, they were under my skin, and, and 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 as I was getting good and upset and frustrated with it, <laughs> and I and I was feeling like I would be justified. To let them know what's actually going on. You know what the Lord told me? He said, that's my child. Wait a minute, Lord. Come on, Lord. <laughs> Don't put it on me like that. Like, like, that's my child. You can't do it. 
As a matter of fact, I found myself coming back later and apologizing. You know, I had said some things. My tone was not right. And you, you understand? We must be swift. We have to examine ourselves. We have to watch ourselves. We have to control ourselves and put away all these things. Sometimes, uh, sometimes we, 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 we have those big sins that everybody would say that they're bad. And sometimes we don't have those big sins that everybody would say are bad. But we need to make sure that we stay in right standing with God. Right? Amen. Right standing with God at all times. Because James, he talks about it being like a mirror. That, that an individual goes and they look into a mirror and they look and they see themselves and they look clearly and they understand what's going on and when they turn away, they forget. They forget what they look like. They forget what they're supposed to be. They forget who they are. Right? That they forget. We cannot, see, the only reason that they were able to forget what they look like because they didn't stay long enough. Sometimes we got to stay a little bit longer, looking in the mirror a little bit more so we can actually see what we look like and understand what we're supposed to be looking like in the world, right? And this is, we, our mirror is the word of God. We look into the word of God and we look long enough that we might be able to go and not forget who we are. Not forget, you said to, you, have you heard people say, I'm going to put my righteousness down, I'm going to put my salvation down for a little bit so I can let you have, no, we must remain. He tells us, this is where it goes, James 1, 22 through 25, he says, do not merely listen to the word, right, because there's a lot of word going forth, there's all types of videos, there's all types of study groups, there's all types of preaching, there's all types of lessons, do not only listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. But do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what it looks like. But whoever looks intently long enough into the perfect law, God's word, that gives freedom, and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed Amen. in what they do. Everybody want a blessing, right? Amen. Who all want a blessing? I tell you, one of the easiest prayers to pray is bless. Bless me, Lord. That's one of the easiest prayers. We all love that prayer. Yes. See, the, rea the reality of it is, is that we have to obey the word of God. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Why? Because if we don't, we're deceiving ourselves. And if we, if you hear the word without taking action, hearing the word without application is not real Christian living. I'll say it again. Hearing the word without application is not real Christian living. This is not just a change of behavior. This is a transformation of lifestyle. It is changing from one ownership to another ownership. That I was once a slave to the world and now I am a servant or a slave to Christ. Amen. This is only a person tricking themselves and not knowing. When you hear the word, you can quote the word, you memorize the word, you got the word, but you ain't doing the word. Being a hearer of the word and not doer of the word is like looking in the mirror and walking away and forgetting how you look. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and continues, they are not a hearer only who forgets, but a doer who acts, and they will be blessed in doing as they do. Amen. What they hear. From the word of God. Finally. James 1.26 and 27. It says. Those who consider themselves religious. And yet do not keep. A tight rein on their tongues. Deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. Religion that God our father. Accepts as pure and faultless. Is this. To look after the orphans and widows. In their distress. And to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. See, true religion, if we're going to really deal with it, is controlling your mouth. Amen? 
Because out of the abundance of the heart comes the word of your mouth. Do you know that you can eat dirt and that would not dirty your heart? But if you think dirt, it pollutes your heart. And so what happens is we're going to have to control our mouths. We're going to have to, listen, it, it is very challenging. It's very hard to, to be able to, to keep silent when you know everything on the inside is saying, talk right now. This is what you're supposed to do. And, and, and when you know something bad is coming to your mind that you just got to let it out. Now, we, are we talking about speaking the truth? We're not talking about speaking the truth. The, the Bible always speaks to in speaking the truth and encouraging, but we must do it in love. We must speak the truth in love because if we do not speak the truth in love, now, now when you speak it in love, you can't help it how they accept it, right? But sometimes people trying to be a little profound. <laughs> they want you to feel something, you understand? They, they're trying to put a little emphasis on it, a little off on it. And, and, and what happens is when you speak the truth in love, because we're gonna have to tell the truth, right? Because this is what the Bible calls us to do. We're going to have to control our mouths. We're going to have to control our thoughts. You cannot say everything that comes to your mind. Amen. You cannot. Some, th some, some thoughts you have to say, oh, no, that ain't the right one. That ain't it. That ain't it. I'm going to hold that one. I'm going to hold it. Even, even while people are talking. Even your rebuttal. You ready to rebuttal. You got a rebuttal. You ready to let them know that I got it. No, you ain't going to get away with that. That little quick one. No, you, even in those, you hold it. Because the more you control yourself, you're actually practicing true religion. The second thing is, is that he tells us to, to look out, to, to visit the orphans in their affliction. The orphans, they're the ones that cannot take care of themselves. To visit the widows in their affliction. And then finally, he can, it, it concludes with telling us and remain unstained by the world. We live in the world, y'all. I, 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 I know that you can pick up your cell phone and go online and see something that you didn't want to see. I know that you can watch a video and before you know it, they talking about something and, and you don't even know how it popped on, but it didn't pop on. You watching it, you listening to it, and you say, wait a minute now. We live in this world, but we got to continue to go to that mirror of God's word. Amen. To remind us who we are, what we should look like, and, and how we should be responding, and how we should be handling situations. We are Christians, not just in title, but in how we live. Even now, I believe that there are those under the sound of my voice that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I believe that if you pray this prayer, repeat this prayer after me, I believe that the Lord, He will save you. He's going to actually meet you right where you are and he's going to change your life will you pray this prayer with me please repeat after me Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus please forgive me please forgive of all my sins, of all my sins. Lord, Lord I believe, I believe that, you died that you died and rose again, rose again. Lord, Lord save me I receive my salvation now in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray another prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you see your people. God, I pray that you would meet their every need. Father, I pray that you would capture them, Father. Not like one under arrest, but capture them, Father God, like one that's looking in the mirror and find themselves amazed at what your word has to say about them. That they would find themselves fascinated, oh God, that they have to go again, Lord God, and take another look, Father, and they find themselves looking to your word as the standard for their lives. Lord God, don't let them leave the mirror of your word unchanged. Father, don't let us forget Holy Spirit, you, you, your working is to bring all things back to remembrance. Bring all things back to our remembrance. Help us to remember the word. 
especially in time of need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you all. I'm so grateful for you all joining us. Finally, I know that somebody prayed that prayer. And all I can say is, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All heaven rejoice. Listen, I'm so glad you joined us. I'm so glad you came to be with us. Listen, I want to just encourage you all to stay encouraged and grow in faith and cause God to actually uh, continue to stand with you throughout this time. God bless you and keep you. May it continue to cause his face to shine upon you. Till next time. God bless. Amen. Amen.